There he comes, look. Martian rain. This must be the first drop of rain to touch this ground in a Martian year. I wonder what the effect will be on this iron particle dust. I don't know, Mary. Well, there's one effect it's having right now, down by your feet, look. They look like lichens. But where'd they come from? Well, the seas must have been lying dormant until the rains came. Yeah, but look at the speed they're going, it's fantastic. They must be able to take advantage of water, whatever they find it, and absorb it at tremendous speed. But well, come on, Mary. I can't move the canister, they're growing all over it. They must be trying to reach the water inside it. They must be able to sense it in some way. But look, look, they're growing on me now. They're, they're taking root everywhere. Come on, Mary, leave the water canister and try to get out of here. I can't, they're growing on me too. Well, don't worry, Mary, they can't harm you. Can't they? We've almost reached the top of the escarpment. From the top, I should be able to see the old, the Indus Valley. Right here, you two. Can you see the settlement? Can you see any signs of life? Yes. Get back. Yes. There's life, all right. But it's not the sort of life I thought it was. What do you mean? I'm going to see for myself. Don't go too far. It's just a long strip of vegetation. And beyond that, it's just desert as far as you can see. There's no... there's no water, there's no nothing. I knew there'd be nothing. That green stuff that's growing as we watch it, where the rain's falling. It must be the lichens we can see from Earth. They're gigantic. And they seem to be moving towards us. Oh, come on, Jeff, let's get back to the Rockies. No, no. We're not far enough south. I must have miscalculated. Oh, we can't go further south even yeah. if we wanted to. This drop must be hundreds of feet. We could never get down it. No, but we can go around it. it means going further north, but it must level off somewhere. At any rate, that's where I'm going. Oh, come on. Jeff, I'm not going any further with you. We ought to be looking for the others instead of for Martian settlements. He said they'd fallen down a crevasse. I don't believe him, Jeff. I never did. Well, let's follow him a bit further. After all, we're not going away from the rocket now. We're just going round in a big circle. Are you coming with me? Jeff, I think we ought to get back to the rocket. I don't believe all this about Martians and settlements. I don't think Mr. Brown does either. You saw the look on his face just now. Let's stay with him for a bit longer. He was telling lies about the settlement. So don't you think he might have been lying about what happened to the others? Well, that's what I've been thinking. If we stick to him, we might find out what really happened. And that's our only chance. Are you coming? All right, Mr. Brown, we're following you. No good. As fast as I cut it down, it, it grows again. Well, there must be some way of killing these things off. Not so long as they can get water. If only this rain would stop. It isn't even rain anymore. It's sleet now. The temperature must be dropping. Oh, it looks as if we really had it this time. We didn't travel 60 million miles through space just to be trapped by a lot of primitive spinach. Now keep on your feet, Mary, and try to keep moving if you can. The wind's rising. It's cleared the sleet anyway. Have you any idea how long these oxygen canisters will hold out? Yeah, we've got an hour or two yet. Well, that would just about get us back. But we can't move an inch. Mary, this wind. Look what it's doing to the lichens. Well, it's, it's almost as if they're shrinking in the cold. Look. Look, they're brittle. They must be freezing. All that water inside them. <laughs> you can snap them like corn stalks. Oh, that cold wind has saved us. As long as they keep freezing, we can break our way out of here. Now, come on, Mary. That's it. Come on, you all right? Yeah. Oh, that now, was a lucky escape. This is one law of nature we overlook. The faster things grow, the faster they perish. <laughs> well, there's another old law of nature, Mary, that I want to put into operation right now. What goes up must come down. I want to get back to Earth as quickly as possible.
you really think some Martian is going to answer him? I don't know, but if he keeps this up, he's going to run that battery flat. Oh, shouldn't we start moving again? Oh, well, they're not answering. Perhaps there isn't anyone to answer. There must be. For ten years, I've been listening to their signals from outer space. But that was what's called space chatter. They weren't really signals. They were signals, all right. How do you know they came from Mars? Mars is habitable. Must have had a flourishing civilization once. Perhaps once, a long time ago, but not now. <laughs> well, it doesn't look very habitable to me. Uh... There must be something! This planet has an atmosphere. Green things go here. There must be life somewhere. Why should Earth be the only planet that has life? Perhaps Earth won't have life when it's as old as Mars. But they're both the same age and they both came from the sun at the same time. But Mars is smaller and further away from the sun. It cooled quicker. But I've had signals. Nothing can get around that. I've had signals. I've heard them. They make sense. Supposing they were sent out hundreds of years ago and they've been traveling ever since. And in the meantime, the civilization had died or gone elsewhere. Oh, but that's nonsense. You know, Jeff, I think you may have the answer. Now, Mr. Brown, what really happened to Mr. Henderson and Professor Meadows? They're not dead, are they? No. I got away from them. They went on. They're all right. But how do we know they're all right? Oh, Henderson knows how to look after himself. They'll get back to the rocket on time. But we've got all their extra oxygen. If anything holds them up, their oxygen won't last out. Then we must look for them. We can search for hours without finding anything. Right. We don't even know which way they went. Well, Mr. Brown must know where they went to. If I help you to find them, will you promise not to mention that I said they were dead? After all, we all make mistakes. All right. We promise. Very well. I'll take you to where I last saw them. All right, Margaret. Oh, don't look so distrustful. I may have been wrong this time, but I know more about this planet than any of you. Come on, come on. No, come on, Mary. We've got to keep ahead of those rain clouds. Clear for a bit. They've moved over to the east. Mary, your water canister. There's still lichens on it. But I cleaned them off as soon as we got onto dry ground. These must have grown since. Where did they come from? There's only one explanation. There must be lichen spores floating in the air. Wherever they get a taste of water, they start to grow. Just proves how adaptable life can be when it's got to. Yes. Oh, we've come back to the crevasse. That means we'll have to detour to the east again. That'll take at least an hour. No. East of us are those rain clouds. That means lichens. We're not going to try to get through those again. We can't always rely on a cold wind blowing just whenever we want it. Well, have you any idea how to get across? If we had ropes and grappling irons, we could do it. But we are right down there with Brian. Oh. I wonder how far this ravine goes. No way of telling. It just disappears into the distance. Well, we'll just have to strike west along the edge of it and hope we can find somewhere to cross. Well, we'll have to find it quickly. I've very little oxygen left. You're going to have to make it last a long time, Mary, because look, there are rain clouds to the west of us as well. Behind us, there are lichens gaining on us fast. And in front of us, the crevasse. <sighs> We're really between the devil and the deep. Oh, come on, Mary, we're not beaten yet. Yes, yes. This is about where I last saw them. Of course, they may have reached the ice cap and got back to the rocket by now. I'll try them on the radio again. Yes, yes, do. And you tried to make them believe you'd fallen down there? Well, I nearly did. The dust was blowing. I could see nothing. 
Suddenly I got the idea that they think I'd gone down there and wouldn't look for me anymore, so I retraced my footsteps and left them to it. But I don't understand. Uh, when you left them, why did you take the skid with all my oxygen supplies? Oh, I suppose I must have felt that my mission was more important than theirs. Well, after all, I left them their water cans. There's still no reply from the rocket. Uh, Where could they have gone to from here? Well, let's see. They were making north. That means they'd go round this ravine and then... I imagine after that they'd make a detour back. Yes, but we've no idea which way. Ah, exactly. And that's why I think we should make straight back for that rocket. Oh, no! We've got to find them! We've got to leave this planet within two hours. Now, if we don't turn back, nobody will take off. Margaret, they might get back to the rocket before us and not be able to take off because we're missing. All right. I suppose we'll have to. Come on, then, quickly. Turn this side around. that moves. Yes, you're right. A space helmet. There are two of them. It's them. Hooray! Look! What? It's the children. And Brown. He's still alive after all. Well, Dr. Livingston, I presume. And just what are you two doing out of the rocket? Oh, Brown, have you got any spare oxygen left on the skid? Yes. Good, we're down to our last cubic foot. Yeah. Well, how do you plan we get across to them? I don't know, Mary. How wide would you say this is? Ten foot? Yeah, about that. Mm. Brown, get all that stuff off the skid, would you? Why, what are you going to do? Well, as far as I remember, that skid extends to just over ten feet. We're going to use it as a bridge. That's it. Unload it. Extension. chance we've got to take. All right, come on, lower it towards me. Steady. Steady does it. Hold hard. That's it. Down she comes. Right, easy, easy. Okay. That's it. Right, now let me have it. Not too good. I'll hold it this end. Now, Mary, I'll hold it firm while you walk across. You mean I should walk along that thing standing up? Well, that's the easiest way to do it. Don't tell me you're afraid of heights. I always have been. Well, it's a fine time to find that out. Don't worry, Mary, you'll be all right. The water canisters will help you to balance. Now, don't look down. Just keep your eyes on Brown. Don't worry, I intend to. Come on, Professor Meadows. It's all in the cause of science. Right, Henderson, now it's your turn to walk the plank. And the far side doesn't look at all safe. Margaret, what's the rate of fall on Mars? 16 feet per second, isn't it? Look, the far end is crumbling! Uh Stop, climb up! 
Oh, thanks, Jeff. Oh, you saved my life. But we lost two in the water, Candace. We can't go back for any more now. Henderson, you know we're due to take off within an hour. Aren't you going to stay and meet your Martian friends? Huh? Oh. We've been talking about it. And Mr. Brown's coming back to us with us. I see. Now, just why did you two leave the rocket? Well, Mr. Brown came back and said he'd lost you, so we came out to look for you. That doesn't explain why the skid and our oxygen supplies were taken. I'm sorry about that. I'll explain later. Now, we must make a move. Now, what about all this equipment? Now the skid's gone. All right, Jeff, bring the oxygen cylinders over here, will you? As for the rest of it, we've no further use for it, except the radio, the compass, and the water canisters. Now, we'll carry those. Yes. Thanks, sir. Yes, take the compass. All right, you go on ahead. Right. While Mary and I change our oxygen cylinders. All of a sudden, Brown's lost interest in his Martians, and the kids are covering up for him or something. Oh, I don't know. Maybe we'll find out soon. But the main thing is we're safe. Yeah. But for how long? He's in this with us now. He wants to get back to Earth just as much as we do. I was thinking something. He's probably wondering what's going to happen to him when we get back to Earth. What do you mean, what'll happen to him? Well, he's in trouble. After all, he tripped his way into the rocket and he forced us to come to Mars. And he was going to leave the other two here to die. Had you forgotten that, Jeff? We promised to say nothing about that. You promised? You were with me. That went for both of us. Anyway, he thought it did. All right, then. But I don't think he really has given up his crazy idea about Martians. Well, now then, you two, what are you talking so earnestly about? We... We were just wondering what would happen when we got back to Earth. I see. Mary, are you sure this is the way we came? That's what I was beginning to wonder. That dust storm seems to have changed a lot of the features I was trying to memorize. Yeah, well, one bit of Mars looks very much like another to me. Wait a bit. Don't come any further. Why? What is it? Professor Meadows, how deep did you say this dust was? About eight centimeters. Well, look, I'm sinking right down into it. Well, come on, get my hand. Get back on this rock up here. That's it. Oh, no wonder the landscape had changed. Those are drifts from that dust storm. Well, they can't be very deep. Oh, well, we better not risk it, Mary. Look, there's a high ridge of rock over there. Let's make for that. Oh, that looks like tough going. Well, at least it'll be firm. And it will make more speed that way. Do you realize we've only an hour left before we must take off? Oh, come on, Professor Meadows. The others are going ahead. I'd better collect this mineral specimen first. Looks like basalt, but I doubt that it is. At least we ought to try and get some scientific re purposes for our expedition. Island calling MR4. You now have 15 minutes and 5 seconds to take off. You now have 15 minutes to take off. You now have 14 minutes 55 seconds to take off. Hello MR4, this is Bakken Island calling. nearly there. Yeah. It's a pity to leave this planet after having seen so little of it. You know, Jeff, if a Martian landed in the Australian desert or in Greenland, he'd think the Earth was uninhabited, wouldn't he? But your signals, nothing answered your signals. Yes, that's what's so difficult to understand. What am I going to tell them when we get back to Earth? What am I going to tell them? Look! There's the rocket! Uh, I thought we'd be better off travelling along higher ground. Oh, we'd better keep to this rock face, though. I don't trust those dust drifts down there. They may have shifted. Come on, you two! We can see the rocket, but we've only got 
12 minutes to make it. What are they doing back there? Collecting mineral specimens. It's tricky getting along this ledge. I'd rather be up here than down there. All right, on you go, Brown. found life further south. Why should I wait for them? You managed without the rope clip. Yes, we had to. Those quick hands were quicker than we thought. Where's Mr. Brown? He's in the rocket. Do you think we ought to have left him in the rocket by himself? Look! He's pulling up the ladder! Calling MR4. It will be zero hour in 60 seconds from now. 59, 58, 57, 56, 55, 54, 53, 52, 51, 50, 49. At least you won't be able to tell them back on Earth that we found nothing. Nothing! I can't take you with me. You deny everything I've ever said or believed about life on Mars. You'll make a fool of me. I'll not allow anyone to do that. <laughs> 